Bonjour, mes amis. Hello, my friends. How are you? Comment ça va? I'm so happy to see you again. Welcome back to junior elementary art class. Our lesson today is called Going Rock. For today's lesson, you will need drawing or printer paper, a graphite pencil, and an eraser. Our lesson today is about the rough copy. When creating a piece of art, one of the biggest worries for an artist is making a big mistake after working hours, even days, on a composition and not being able to fix it. Well, to avoid this exact situation, an artist will produce a rough copy of their composition. This is a rough sketch where the artist can try out ideas, make mistakes, and make all the important decisions necessary before starting the final piece. This allows the artist to concentrate only on the quality of the artwork and not the overall organization of the piece. This is a development sketch for The Good Farmer, a piece by William Blake made with pen and wash over pencil between 1780 and 1785. In this rough copy, what decisions was Blake making? He decided on the position of the elements in the composition. Here's another development sketch of The Good Farmer. This one was also done in pen and wash over pencil. Why do you think he made this second rough copy? He wasn't satisfied with the position and details of these elements and therefore redrew them to his satisfaction. Here's the finished piece of the good farmer done in pen and wash by William Blake. How did making the two rough copies help Blake create this finished artwork? Without the rough copies, Blake could not have known which elements and details he wanted, nor how to draw them in his finished artwork. Our project today is called Rough Copy. After every step in this project, I want you to ask yourself, can I draw this better? If you find something you want to change, please erase it and try again. Remember, it doesn't matter how messy it is. That's what a rough copy is for. Move on only when you are happy with what you see. Now I want you to choose a subject for a new composition. Please do not copy the example I produce in the video. Now let's start with the horizon line and then in the middle ground plane I want you to draw your center of interest with whatever you might find near it. So I've chosen to draw a dragon as my center of interest and as for what's near it well I'm having it stand on a smaller mountain peak. So I'm drawing that in as well. Now I'm actually taking my time to really make sure that what I'm drawing is exactly what I want. This video is sped up to double speed, so I'm actually half as fast as this when I'm drawing. Please slow down and take your time to make sure that every bit of the drawing is exactly what you want. I'm using the geometric structure to really decide how big and where the different parts of the dragon are going to be. Oh, 
I'm erasing my first mistake. I didn't like the way that leg was positioned. So I'm going to be redrawing it differently after. Putting in the lower leg and the rest of the arm. But here too, I didn't like the way the leg was positioned, so I decided to erase it and try again. Do this as often as you feel you need to. Stick with your drawing only if you're really happy with it. It's okay to keep on trying. That's what the rough copy is for. I'm adding the wing shapes in the back. And a few more rocks in the front to finish off what the dragon is standing on. Alright, let's continue to the background plane. Add what you, uh, <laughs> add what would be near the horizon and in the sky. Remember, these elements are very far away. So you're drawing gigantic things, but you're drawing them very tiny. Now I've decided to put some mountains near the horizon in the background. Now these mountains are much, much bigger than the mountain peak that I did for the dragon. But because they're so far away, they're drawn much smaller. It, this helps with the illusion of making making them look like they're far back. I decided to add a few more overlapping elements in my background. That's a bit of a forest texture on the side. And I'm adding a lake in front of the forest. Now that I'm drawing in the reflection in the lake right now. There I go, erasing things I didn't like. Actually, here I think I'm erasing the horizon. Now, finally, I want you to draw the elements for the foreground, near the bottom of the page. Now remember, these elements are actually very close to you. So you need to draw these very big. So these are going to be tiny elements that you can draw very big. Now since my center of interest in this piece is actually a dragon, which is huge, one of these tiny things is actually a knight on horseback. So I'm drawing him really, really tiny, like he looks like he's far away. I drew him on a cliff edge overlooking this dragon. This makes the dragon look absolutely massive. It's only because I put the tiny thing next to it. Mm -hmm. 
Now, since this isn't exactly in the foreground, I decided to add a few more boulders and plants in the foreground. Again, these are the tiny things, and I'm drawing them very, very big. Each one of these little tiny plants coming from behind the boulder is twice the size of my man on horseback. Now the last thing you need to do okay, is you need to look over your entire composition and you ask yourself one last time, can I draw this better? So I want you to erase anything you want to change and only stop when you are fully satisfied with your composition, just like William Blake. When you can really say, this is my best work. Now, we are stopping here for the lesson, but now that you have a composition that you're proud of, a nice rough, you can take that rough and turn it into a good piece, okay? By finding a really good piece of paper and producing a masterpiece of your own. When you're done, sign your work. Thank you, my friends, for joining Junior Elementary Art Class. Merci beaucoup. I hope you had fun. Remember to take care of yourselves and your family, and I will see you next week. Au revoir.